you want that promotion. Either you're new to your job and you want to create a path to getting promoted, or you've been overlooked time and time again. This training is for both of you, and it's going to be a doozy because I'm walking you through the steps to get there. So grab a pen and a paper and let's get you promoted. See you on the other side. Why, well, hello there. I'm Sarah Curto. I am the founder and head coach for the Career Love Academy. And that's my monthly membership program that takes you from dreading your days to loving your days at the workplace where you find work you love not just any old thing. Okay, this month, I want to tell you in a couple of weeks, starting September 26th, I am hosting a free training series right here on YouTube. Um, but I have workbooks and guides and sheets that are going to go along with it. It is all about what's going on in the world right now. All the uncertainty. So we don't know what's going on. And that has a lot of us freaking out about our careers. So my newest training is taking care of all that. How to recession proof your career. I, oh my gosh, I'm so excited about it. It's four days of training. The first day I'm going to tell you what I see as a career expert going on. What So you know, you need to know the good, the bad, and the ugly, all of the different sides and what it really means as someone who has worked for over two decades in this in this industry, um, what it means for you. Okay, the second day, I'm going to walk you through an exercise to figure out what you should actually do right now. Do you need to be shutting it down or do you need to be pushing the gas pedal in your career? We are going to walk through an exercise that's going to give you the answer by the end of it. It's an amazing exercise. Then day number three, I'm going to walk you through for those who are, you know, let's, you know, let's be empowered. Let's take over. I want to do, or I want to accomplish my career goals. And now is the time to do it. No matter what's going on, I'm going to walk you through how to do it. My steps for finding work you love, even during a recession. And then the last day, I'm going to walk you through the three most common mistakes people make when times are iffy, uncertain, bad, and how to fix them so that you don't fall prey. I want you to click the link below to register to join us. This is going to be such an impactful series of workshops, and it's all free. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Every day on YouTube, I'll be going live. Now, if you're watching this and it's done, then I want you to click that link to register below because there are they no longer exist here on YouTube, uh, but the replays are live and well, so you can sign up and get them sent to you right now, so you don't even have to wait. Okay, so back to it all. Uh, we're back here with another YouTube training on focusing on your career, making sure that it's full of balance and meaning and money. <laughs> And so I want you to make sure that you subscribe and hit notifications because every Thursday I come here and I teach you something new. This week, it's getting promoted and how to show management that you deserve that promotion. Step number one, oftentimes our managers don't really know that we even want more so the first step is you need to make sure they know what you want. <clears throat> now, there are two people who must know this. The first is obvious. This is your manager. So I want you to discuss with them your career goals, and I want you to work together to discuss a professional development plan that focuses on skill development and experience. I want you to talk to them about professional training, job shadowing, projects, increased responsibility, ways to close the gap between you and the promotion you want. And we're going to get into that a little bit more, um, but your manager is also an ally, an advocate for you in identifying those gaps, but they are a must in helping fill them. The second is less obvious, but maybe set up a meeting with your HR partner or partners 
Uh, so this is your HR business partner or HR generalist, HR advisor for your business unit. And I want you to tell them about your career goals because HR are typically one of the first groups of people within an organization that knows about staffing. A lot of them are heavily involved in the staffing strategy. So they work with management on this stuff. So they know what's happening by having them invested in your future success within the organization. It means they can advocate for you, help facilitate key introductions, training, job shadowing, all those things they sort of mentioned with the manager. And I know many people who have had HR on their side, even when their bosses weren't, who were able to secure that next promotion or move into another department that then allowed them to reach the level of position that they want because HR was on their side. So I want you to talk to your manager and to HR. Now, step number two is like the classic, annoying business thing, <laughs> tool, the SWOT analysis. We need to do a SWOT analysis because all strategic plans start with this. So let's be strategic with our goal of promotion. So first you're gonna look at yourself and we're gonna look at your strengths. I want you to do some self-reflection. So this may include some assessments like the Myers-Briggs type indicator or strengths finder. This can be you reviewing your performance reviews, talking with colleagues, again, in that manager talk. Um, it could just be like, what are you known for? What do people come to you to solve? When people think of you, what do they think of? Like, what, what's the first thing that comes to their mind? Uh, are you a helper? Are you always the person with the answer? Are you IT or tech savvy? So why do they come to you? What do they think about with you? I want you to also ask yourself, what makes you different from other people? What makes you different from other people around you on your team, uh, other people in the organization from the rest? And then the last question is, how can you capitalize on these? How can you use these strengths to propel that way forward? How can we make sure that other people know about these strengths? And that leads us to the W in the SWOT analysis, and this is weaknesses. What are your shortcomings? Now, I want you to keep, okay, pause here, because it's, we're very good at coming up with all the weaknesses. We don't need an exhaustive list of all of your weaknesses. Let's keep them relevant. So let's just focus on the weaknesses relevant to your current and the future role that you want. And I want you to figure out how can you mitigate them, especially the ones with, that's in your plan to improve. Um, I want you to take a look and figure out what sort of things do you need developed, skills, hard and soft skills to progress to that next level. And again, that conversation with your manager will really help. Now, we also want to look at the competition. So let's take a look at the opportunities. I want you to look at the internal competition peers and other recent external hires that have gone into the role that you want and what are they lacking? I want you to focus on the areas that they're lacking, but where you bring something to the table. This is your opportunity. This is what I have that they might not have. And this is key because in any sort of team environment, and even if it's a team of leaders, the hiring manager is thinking about gaps. They're like, this person is really strong at this. Therefore, I think I need someone who's a little bit stronger in this to balance each other out. So this allows you to figure out what that is so that when we're communicating it, you can highlight it. We also wanna look at threats. What are you lacking in comparison to them? And if possible, is there a way to close that gap? We don't always need to get it equal, but is there a way to make it a little closer? So the SWOT analysis of strengths, weaknesses is looking at yourself, opportunities and threats is looking at your competition. Okay, step number three. Find a mentor. This is an internal mentor, especially a key decision maker for your future role. That would be chef's kiss. It, that would be an amazing way to build key relationships. Also to gain knowledge and skills and increase your visibility across the organization without always feeling too awkward. Um, this is also a great way uh, to get more 
information, another person's perception of you and your place within the organization. Because sometimes our managers can be biased, biased for the good that other people don't see. Or unfortunately, what we see more often is biased for the bad and what they don't see in you. They've created a role for you and they don't see you outside of that role. And so it's an, a, they're giving you false information if that's happening. So we need a mentor so we can get another objective opinion. I wanted to take a look at your SWOT analysis and getting some advice from human resources. If they could even help facilitate a meeting with a potential mentor and use that when you're looking at the org chart. And once you've narrowed down the choices of who you want your mentor to be, I want you to ask or suggest buying them a cup of coffee and then simply ask during that meeting. It will look great on you. You think you're going to be asking for too much. If they don't have time, they will just politely say no, provide someone else. But no matter what, it's going to look great on you to take initiative. And oftentimes, many executives, their only form of networking is mentoring individuals. So many executives love to mentor other individuals. Number four, speaking of initiative, let's take some. <laughs> so number four is take initiative. Do it. Put your hand up for projects, join a committee, recognize a problem and present a solution. Make a process more efficient. Show your worth and potential with your work, but then also talk about your work. So simply dropping it in when it makes sense so that you don't feel awkward or smarmy. Um, make sure people know that this is the stuff you're doing. So that is... To recap, the four steps to getting promoted is have a conversation. You need to tell them what you want. Do a SWOT analysis, find a mentor, and then take the initiative. Now, the Career You Love Academy gets you promoted. And when you see, when you join the Recession Proof Your Career free training workshop, we're going to talk about how oftentimes during recessions, we feel like we may need to turtle and like lay low. We don't want to stick our head up because we're afraid, you know. <laughs> um, and I'm going to walk you through how you can decide if now's the right time to really aggressively go after it, or maybe simply just to lay the foundation for it to happen when things settle settle down. Uh, but the Career Love Academy is also perfect for this because it's designed to get you moving towards career fulfillment with its five steps. Discovering your purpose, designing your brand, increasing your visibility, showcasing your value so that you can then make the impact you want to be making. Now, the doors are going to be opening this month. So I want you to click the link below to get notified or join us for Recession Proof Your Career so you can get started without waiting for the doors to open. Let's accelerate your promotion. Until next week, have a great day. If this training resonated with you, then join the Career You Love Academy. It's my group coaching monthly membership program that takes unhappy workers who are unfulfilled, exhausted, and dreading their days to finding work they love, where they're finally making more money, more of an impact while having the time and energy to truly enjoy and love their life. You can join us by going to www.sarahcurdo.ca forward slash C-Y-L-A. Now that's a Sarah without an H. So it's www.sarahcurdo.ca forward slash C-Y-L-A. See you in there.